marketing is thank you digital marketing is the combination of your website your social media channel your email outreach your public relations your media relations um and like all the things that you're doing in order to work your customer through the funnel and what's the funnel that is going to change again depending on the type of business that you are but the goal is that you are introducing people to who you are you are nurturing them so that they learn more about you and they become intrigued and they sort of start to see you as an option for whatever problem that they're trying to solve, whatever product that they're looking for. And then um, you're, you're convincing them to buy. Um, and, you know, all of us, even if you are an entrepreneur, like we are also consumers as well, right? So you're going to probably recognize some of these things and how you are sold to and the advertisements that you see, um, you know, online. Um, <clears throat> so let's keep it going here. What to do, to do. Uh, so let's talk about the marketing funnel. So this marketing funnel is very specifically uh, not specifically, but it's more geared towards that retail e-commerce type of, of business where you are trying to get someone to buy, you know, a thing, uh, whether that be, I think we saw, I saw some spa services. I saw um, there was a mobile uh, bartender. So like you're, you know, that's sort of a, hopefully not a one-time thing, but right. It's, it's what, it's one purchase at a time. Right. Um, and it's kind of an acute purchase where someone who's a service provider, let's just say an accountant. Right. That is more a, a consultative type of service. And so um, the way that you're going to go about doing things is slightly different. But the marketing funnel, um, you know, is its awareness. Right. So this is lead generation. This is getting people their contact information, um, getting them to click on your ads if you're running them. Um, then you have nurturing. And nurturing is, you can see, it's like the, the biggest part of the funnel because this is where people stay. So the thing you have to remember when it comes to digital marketing is that um, people have to be convinced that you're the right option, right? Like, and they have to convince themselves that you're the right option. So, you know, it typically takes anywhere from 10 to 15 touches for someone to actually be ready to reach out to you and engage with you to actually like, you know, make that decision. So all of the things that you do online and your entire online presence is helping you with those different touches. So it's not necessarily that they need to get 15 emails from you. It's not that they need to see 15 of your ads. It may be that they see your ad, right? And they're like, oh, that's interesting. And they do what I do, which is I save stuff, right? I'm like, oh, that's, that's interesting. I don't need it now, but I'm interested in this. I'll save it, right? So I can go back and find it because, you know, it's impossible to find something, you know, three months, five months down the road. And then they might go to your website, right? So that's another touch, something you didn't even know about, but still, right, it's another touch. Then they might decide, okay, like, sure, I'll give them my email address, right? Mm -hmm. So then that's that's something that you can actually see, like, I'm reaching out to that person. Um, but then they might, like, you know, stalk you on social. They might stalk your website. You know, again, like, they're just trying to decide and determine whether or not you are the right fit for them. So the, the lead nurture piece yeah. is... Please mute your phone. Please mute your phone. Thank you. Um, oops, sorry about that. Uh, there we go. Um, and then you really get to like the sales piece of it. Right. And so the sales piece, of course, is its own process and of itself and, you know, convincing someone to buy, buy your product. But everything that you do ahead of time will help you. And so by focusing in on, you know, your marketing funnel and your marketing strategies, that's going to help, you know, your sales pipeline. Um, and then we have this is more of a, a consultative um, type of sales pipeline. Um, and so this is one where there might be several meetings, right? As opposed to someone who is deciding that, you know, they're going to buy a spa service or that they're going to buy like a, a service for the night or something. Um, so this is more of a, um, a, a consultative slash service provider type of um, lead funnel. And certainly if you do have questions, um, please go ahead and put them in because I do want to actually address them in the moment as opposed to waiting to the end, um, just because, you know, we'll go down and I don't want to have to necessarily jump back up. So if you have questions, please feel free to put those in and I'll answer them um, as I see them come up. 
Um, okay. So this is another image that kind of just shows you like what the difference is between B2B and B2C involvement, right? So your target market typically for B2C, aka retail e-commerce is going to be a little bit larger um, because you're appealing to a lot of different people um, and just your, your overall audience is, is, is going to be slightly larger. Whereas B2B, they're coming to you because, you know, they have a very specific problem that you can solve, right? Like you have the solution too. So for example, not everybody needs an accountant, right? But the people that do need an accountant, they they really need an accountant um, and, and vice versa. Not everyone needs, you know, a marketing firm, but the people that really need one, right? Like they they really do need one. So um, that's that's different. Also, typically it's between e-commerce and, and, and service providers. E-commerce, it's one person, right? Like they're out there to buy the one thing for themselves or they're getting it as a gift, but it's it's one person who's really purchasing it and who's making the decision to purchase it. Um, whereas with the B2B, there's probably going to be more than one person, right? There's going to be, you know, potentially like two or three people who have to decide, you know, what we're going to do. And if we're going to go with your, they're going to go with your solution because, you know, again, it's an overall overall decision um, consultative. Um, again, your buying process for, for e-commerce retail, usually single step. It's like, I need this, I'm gonna buy it, done, right? Like there's no need to... Courtney, you froze up just a little bit. Uh, bear with us, everyone, so she uh, gets that corrected. Hi there, how are you? What's your name again? Hey, how have you been? Hey, excuse me. Please mute your phone. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I think so. Let me make sure. Hello, can you mute your phone, please? You know what? David, you can mute her. I don't know that I'm you're the host you in yeah. um, my. I think we just text. Um, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Wait, hold up. Oh, nope, not you. I'm sorry. Okay, okay I'm ready. You ready? So, mm -hmm. um, first name is Ronnie R O N N I. And then my number is 443. Are you the host, David? Okay. Yeah, I'm looking I'm at real one. David, okay. you're the host. And you can go and I'm select so her name. Yeah. Yeah, I'm select her name. name. And then when you select her name, you should be able to. Uh, yeah, me too. Thank you. Talk to you sooner than later. Ayana, can you hear the host? You need to mute your phone. Ayana ain't listening to y'all. All right, just mute it. You did it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just got a text message from David. Her, or excuse me, from Courtney. Her internet dropped. Yep. Uh, let's give her a few minutes to get back on. Um, David, I also see a question in the chat about if the slides and presentation will be emailed. Um, we can ask that question to her once we're completed. We are recording, so we will be able to forward the recording. So maybe while waiting, instead of wasting the time, we can have people introduce themselves and just tell us a little bit about what they know about digital, um, you know, um, the whole topic, about the topic. That sounds like a good item. Yeah, so David, you want to start that, you know, because you can uh, call people up because uh, I cannot see everyone. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I'll start with myself, David Freeman, again, the uh, business advisor here at BCL. Um, so as you know, marketing or digital marketing is, is a is a challenge, um, kind of a, um, a moving target to say. Um, so 
I'm going to learn right along with the rest of you. Um, hopefully, I can pick up some tidbits that I'll be able to convey to my to my clients. Um, if anybody wants to jump in, just let me know. I guess I'll jump in. Uh, I'm a motion from Deep Flow Studios. We're a recording studio. We have a pretty big uh, social media following, but then Instagram took down our account, so we had to restart over, and that was really frustrating because it was their glitch, not ours, and no one will respond from Instagram. Um, also have I'm also a realtor, and I have an um, investment company where we rent to people with pit bulls since other landlords don't, so I have a bunch of different uh, businesses and different social media accounts. And uh, Keontae, who's at the bottom here, he's actually my social media guy for Deep Flow Studios. Sorry, David. Mm -hmm. Courtney said she's yep. in the waiting room. Yep, I just got a digital room. Okay. Should we have another digital marketing on the on the uh, conference? Uh, we shouldn't. I think it's just um, I think it's just mine now. I had two, and then I I. I left and came back in. Yep, nope, you're good. I'm good, right? Okay, great. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, we were just doing a little bit of uh, introductions and talking about what we know already about digital marketing. Okay, great. Um, so you can go ahead and pick up. I appreciate okay, it. Thanks, thanks for your patience, everyone. Yes, thank you. I'm so sorry about that. There we go. That's just, okay, perfect. And then I'm just going to move. Um, if you had questions in there or um, comments, if you could put them back in the chat or we we do them, because I can only see what's what's now. So um, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, where did you hear me stop? I, I know we were on this page, but I'm not sure how much of this um, I got through. David, you need to mute whoever's um, blocking out. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and I will mute them, guys. It just takes me a second to find the name and who's on okay. mute. That's all. So, yeah, I'm going I'm to mute. All right. We should be good to go. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So I'm just I'm gonna start from the top here, just because I don't know um, kind of what where I stopped. I know I heard someone say I was frozen, and then that's what I remember. So, um, okay, so kind of going through like you know what the sales cycle is like, because remember we have sort of e-commerce, retail, and then we have consultants slash service um, providers, right? So your target market is larger for B two C, um, which means you have more people to sort of market to so your awareness pool is larger b2b you still have like a target market that is not going anywhere at all um but you know it's a little bit smaller and it's very niche right so i use a I use accountant as an example you might be an accountant for small businesses you might be an accountant for women-owned businesses you might be an accountant for legal-owned businesses so as you can see very niche um type of um organizations that you might be working with the purchaser again it's going to be one person buying something or service or product for themselves or, you know, a gift. And then with B2B, it might be multiple. So you might be talking to the CEO and the COO and maybe another business partner, right? And they all have to make a decision. Um, and due to that, like the buying process is going to be different, right? You're going to have a single step buying process, and then you might have a multiple step buying process with the more B2B. Um, just because with B2B, like you got to talk to everyone, you might need to do a demo, you might need to, you know, um, it, it just takes a little bit longer sometimes with B2B because there's more people who are part of the decision making process. Um, and then what drives the sales? right, is with B2C e-commerce retail, it's recognition and repetition, right? They see you over and over and over again. Um, and they're like, I want that thing, or I want that service, or I want to participate in this activity. Whereas B2B, it's more relational. Um, and they need a lot more information because they are bringing you on as a service provider to help them either grow their business or, you know, help them to, um, you know, service their own clients or something like that. So you're, you're working working very tightly together and closely together um, with B2B. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about where do you start um, and how do you, how do, you do all of this? 
Um, the first thing I want to say is I'm a big fan of simplicity. I'm a big fan of doing the same things over and over and over again, because what happens is a, it builds you, a, you build a habit, um, you know, in your marketing and you don't have to really think about it because you know exactly what's going to happen. Um, and then two, by doing the same thing over and over again, it starts to build on itself. And so you start to get that recognition, you start to get that awareness. And so the work that you do say six months after your first outreach, um, is being pushed up and helped by all that work you've been doing in the last six months. And so it's, you don't have to work quite as hard every single time you're doing something. So that is, um, that's just really important. So one thing we like to say is specifically for service providers, your relational type businesses, you want to be, you want to set yourself up as what we call a thought leader. You want to set yourself up as a resource for people um, to find information about what you do, um, because that is going to help convince them that you are the right solution for them. And it's going to help you in your sales cycle um, when you, again, remember I said, like it takes 10 to 15 touches for people to actually decide that they're going to, to reach out to you. So if they can read blog posts, if they can find you on LinkedIn, if they can download a white paper, like all of those different touches are passive. And so you don't have to go through all of that work. Like you're not the one having to do that outreach. Like they can get that information on their own. They can come back to you um, on their own and do that in their own time. Um, but then you're also, you might be sending them an email. You might be phone, you might be calling them. They might see you, um, you know, an ad that you're sending out. So you get to touch them in lots of different ways. Uh, with B2C, oh, go ahead. Someone say something. Oh, oh we just need people to meet again. That's all I think. Um, <clears throat> so with B2C, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more difficult for you guys um, because you have to keep putting your products out there. You have to keep putting your, your services out there and you have to do it in different ways. And so sometimes it can feel a little bit like, you know, am I just kind of swimming, you know, upstream? But that is what people need when you are a retail type of business, and that's okay. Um, you know, that's where things like, you know, doing promotions come into place. That's where customer testimonials come into place. So you're still putting content out, but it's a little bit different than how a service provider is putting content out. But again, basically what you are doing is you are putting information out there about your services, about what people think about your services, so that when they see you online on your website, they can, again, convince themselves to, hey, like, maybe I am ready to reach out, you know, and ask questions before I go ahead and purchase um, the service or before I go ahead and purchase the item. And so what we like to say is just baseline, like super duper basic. You can always add on top of this, but baseline is if you are a service provider B2B, you want to really focus on adding content to your website um, around uh, 1,200 words um, for each piece of content, aka a blog post or an article. If you're not a service provider, you can skip the first uh, bullet point um, for retail e-commerce. You'd want to be posting on social um, three to four times a week. That's super duper important, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Instagram, whether it's a combination of all three of them, YouTube, doesn't matter. You need to be posting consistently and you also need to be doing audience engagement Right. So that is if someone comments, you comment back or you respond, um, you know, really just making sure that the people who are taking the time to actually engage with the content that you're putting out, you're giving them kind of like that dopamine that, hey, like, thank you for saying this or let's have a conversation, um, you know, in, in the comments. Um, and then we're big fans of um, of newsletters. And all that does is just collate everything that you've been doing in the last month and put it into one place and point people in the right direction. That's really what it is. Like you do not have to create all new content for your newsletter, right? Um, Daniel asks, offering a rewards program, collecting points for future discounts. Um, is this a good idea? And many companies seem to be offering this kind of program now. It can be a good idea, definitely. And what you want to make sure, though, is that the points 
have like real value, right? Like not just, okay, like if you get five points, you get $5 off. If you're selling a $500 service, right? That they need to do on a regular basis, you know, $5 off is probably not going to convince them to sign up, right? But, you know, if you are, but if you're offering, you know, we will give you a 10 or 15 or 25% discount once you have enough points, right? And it's a service that, you know, is, and they feel like it's worth it. That makes sense to them, right? So be be mindful definitely of like what that point system looks like. What does that reward system looks like, look like? And also what are the different types of rewards that are that are out there, right? So not just discounts. Is it also getting a bonus service? Is it getting extra on top of what they're getting? So it doesn't always have to be money off, right? Because you're a business. And so making sure that, you know, you've got revenue coming in is important. So how can you also use it as a, as a tool for customer service, right? Um, is going to be key for sure. But that's, that was a really good question. Thank you. Um, and kind of to tie it back to that newsletter, that is something that you can mention, right? In every newsletter saying, hey, remember, like, you know, if you work with us on a regular basis, like you get points, you, we have a, we have a rewards, um, you know, program that we have and this is what you get so every time you reach out to anyone every, you know they know that you should work with us and there's a rewards program for sure um, and that typically works with retail e-commerce um, you can do it as a service provider slash consultant it just is a little bit more difficult sometimes for people to to do the buy-in so just just as an FYI um, but certainly you can um, and I've seen it I've seen it happen. Um, all right, so let me just jump down. So um, this portion is really going to be focused in on um, the service provider consultative, and then I'll uh, uh, pepper it with specific options for um, our retail slash e-commerce. So your content strategy. So content is any type of um, information that you're putting out into the world. That is an ad that is information about your services, that is something like a blog post. So content is, is just that, it's a, it's a piece of information. Um, and then there's different types of content that goes on different distribution channels. So you have your blog, that's on your website. You have social media. Um, maybe you wanna do a blog, a podcast. Uh, you have your newsletters, you have press releases, emails. Um, again, print pieces, ads. So content is just information that you're putting out there. And then you have to figure out what are your distribution channels and what, um, how are you going to distribute it, right? So we, we do something called content, uh, the content categories. And we like to do this because, again, if you're just starting and you're like, what the heck am I going to be writing about? Or what type of content? Like, what am I putting on social media? Like, I... What's, what's going out there, right? So we like kind of, we like to put these into like the, these four different buckets. And these are just that, these are buckets. Um, so we have awareness, right? That is just letting people know about who you are, um, your services. Um, and this again, can be divided up into like success stories, testimonials, uh, service details, events, talking about your employees. So that's a really big bucket that you can sort of, you know, create a lot of content around. Um, educational. This is for everybody. Like everyone can put out educational content. So um, for example, say that you are a spa, right? Say that you, um, you know, do uh, face and body services, right? You can absolutely put educational services out there about, you know, let's just say glycerin, right? Like what does glycerin do for your skin and why is it so good? And why do you see it in so many different products, right? Like even though you're selling directly to consumers, you can still be a source of information for them, right? Like you're not precluded from being educational. And, you know, if your customer feels like you're educating them and that you care about, you know, their skin um, and their well-being and their health, that, that, that puts you in a good place in their mind and like, oh, okay, like, you know, now you're kind of moved up a little bit, you know, aside from, you know, a different provider who's just like, just come to us and we'll do a great job. You know what I mean? So, you know, even B2C, like, you know, retail, you can also be educational. And then a specific call to action, right? And so that is very much like buy something, come in, 
uh, contact us, schedule a meeting, uh, schedule a phone call. So like, please do something. Like you definitely want to have those, but you shouldn't have too many of those because then people feel like you're selling, selling, selling. Um, Emotion Shipley said, is there an app or a link on our website or something for rewards program? Can you, um, can you go into a little bit more detail? I just want to make sure um, I understand what you're asking. So I think that's a really good idea. We, you know, we have a recording studio, so it could be like mm -hmm. every time someone recorded here and then posted, they would, would get a point or award or something. Yeah. But I don't know how we would keep track. I feel like there should be some app or something to keep that's, track. Yep, that's a really good question. So depending on the platform you're on, you could, that's either going to be a third party option um, to be able to have a rewards program to set up. Or if you're in something like a WordPress, um, there's quite a few um, plugins that you can add to actually keep it in your website yourself. Um, but yes, there are platforms out there that will help you to build rewards programs and keep track of your customers. Um, something to think about is you're also going to need something called a CRM if you don't have one already. Um, so if you, so that's something like, um, uh, I'm not, I was going to say Salesforce, but that's like probably too, <laughs> too big for most people. But like, you know, Clavio is a CRM slash sales automation tool. You can use something like Pipedrive. That's what a lot of our B2B clients use because it's also for like sales, um, sales pipelines and forecasting. Yep, HubSpot, thank you. That was my next one. Um, there's Insightly. So there's lots of CRMs out there. You okay. want to want something more that is um, cloud-based. I do not recommend CRMs that like you have to download the information or it's an app on your computer. The more cloud-based it is, the more you're going to be able to integrate it with other online platforms and your website. So, um, but there's tons of CRMs and there are also specific niche CRMs for your businesses. So like there are CRMs that is that are just for like beauty and spa and salons. There are CRMs that are just for plumbing. There are CRMs that are just for legal. So you definitely want to, um, to to look to see if there's a CRM specifically for your industry um, and look there first, because typically it's going to be set up for the way that you work and you're not going to have to like build it and set it up, right, to be able to work and have all the different things that you focus in on. Um, <clears throat> oops, someone else needs to mute. I think we have, uh, let's see. I didn't see. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's a, that was a really good question. So thank you so much for, for asking okay. that. I really appreciate you. Um, all right, let me go back in here. All right. So <clears throat> one thing we like to talk about is called content atomization. And this is basically taking your content and using it in a bunch of different places, right? Like everyone here has a lot going on, right? And like you're juggling multiple, you know, duties and things. And so if you, if you can make creating content as easy and simple as possible and to get as much like stretch out of it as possible, you're going to be, you're going to do yourself a favor, right? Like the goal is not that. So say you have, say you have a blog and you have two social platforms and you have an email newsletter, right? That's four, that's four distribution channels. You should not be writing individual content for each one of those, like custom content for each one of those. What you wanna do is you wanna write one main piece and then you want to um, break it up and use it on your other distribution channels in different ways. So for example, let's just take a blog. You have a blog post that has five paragraphs in it, right? So each each or five sections in it, right? You can post that on your website. Great. Now you take each of those five different sections and you turn each of those into a social media post, right? And you post it on five different days, right? You can post it on five days over the course of two weeks. So that's two weeks of content that you just created right there. Um, then for your email newsletter, instead of like creating something totally new for your email newsletter, you have a summary of that blog post in your email newsletter that says read more and they go back to your website. So you haven't created all new content. Like you spent the time to create that one piece of content and you spent the time actually setting it up so that you can, it can go out at different times. You scheduled it, right? But like, you're not writing new content every single time. And that's, what's really key is sometimes I think um, people feel like, 
oh shoot, you know, like I have to do all these things and I have to do all of this different content for, you know, for this, for these platforms when sometimes you don't, sometimes you can take what you've already done and stretch it and break it up into little pieces and then, you know, parcel it out over the course of a week or two weeks. Um, and that work is done and you can work ahead, right. Instead of having to create it every single time. Um, back to the questions, Mick, um, I think there is, uh, Mick asked, uh, out of all those CRMs, do you have a specific recommendation for a one-person business agency? Um, I would actually recommend HubSpot. The free version of HubSpot is actually very robust. It really is. And there's quite a few um, integrations and automations that you can add to HubSpot. You can also use something like the free version of Zapier to connect HubSpot to other systems. So even if, for example, the integration within HubSpot itself to set it up, you need to have the paid version. A lot of times you can bypass that by just going through Zapier and connecting the two systems together. So I'm a big fan of HubSpot for a one-person agency um, because you can, you can really do a lot with that. Um, and it, it basically has everything in there. So you can do uh, your CRM. So you're keeping track of everyone. You can also set up like a meeting scheduler. Um, you know, you can keep track of all your deals. So I, I really like that one. Um, that's a good one. Um, and then <clears throat> Daniel made a very good point. Being consistent with messaging and in your fonts is in, in your visual brand is very, very um, important as well. Um, that goes, that, that is actually quite important. Um, we don't, we don't necessarily talk about in digital marketing, but he's absolutely correct. You want to make sure that people know who you are just by looking at you and not necessarily having to see, right. Your name, right. They should know who you are by, oh, right. I know that's a testimonial post because that's what their test, that's what's in their feed. And that's what their testimonial posts always look like. Or, you know, I know that this is a promo post, right. Whether you're offering a promotion or you're promoting one of your services or something, they always know what that is and they can go, oh yeah, that's a promo post. So being really consistent with your, with your visual brand is very important. And if you don't have a visual brand, or if you just kind of have like, we have a logo, we know what colors we like to use, you might actually want to work with a freelance graphic designer to actually put together um, templates for you, um, like in, in Canva. I'm a big fan of Canva for that, right? Like they set up the templates for you and all you have to do is, is upload and adjust the content, like the actual writing on it. And then you have something that's ready for you um, to, to post on social on the different platforms. Um, <clears throat> So, so yeah, so that is content um, atomization. So that is taking that main content piece and just using it in different in different ways. Um, and it just really helps. And not only that, but I don't have SEO as part of this because if I did, then we'd be here for like another three days because I can talk about SEO forever and ever and ever because I love it. But um, it's also very good for SEO because when you are linking back to your website from all these other different platforms, um, you're also giving yourself, um, you know, a boost from those larger websites as well. So um, that's actually really helpful. Um, okay, so this piece right here is very specifically, if you're my retail e-commerce folks, you can sort of Blaze your eyes. You don't have to listen to this. It's okay. Um, but for my service providers, this is very important for you. Um, thought leadership, um, it's an overused term, but it's a very, it's very helpful term. And what it is, is it basically means that you are establishing yourself as the go-to resource for people, for your target market, for your specific services. And you're not doing that by like, telling people, right? You're showing people through the content and the resources that you're providing to them that you know what you're talking about. You're on the cutting edge. So you're paying attention to what's happening happening in the industry and what's important to them. Um, you're also sharing information um, around what's going on in the industry that's not necessarily what you're doing. And as you can see here, right, you're providing useful answers you are answering their questions that they had. They didn't even ask you these questions, but like, you know, that these are the typical questions that people tend to ask, right? When they come to, when they want to work with you. So you're, you're answering their questions before you even ask them. And so that's very helpful. Um, and then by 
putting, and this is very, this is very much focused on your website, like so, so, so much focus on your website, not social media, um, not podcasts, not video, YouTube, that sort of thing. It's very, very much focused on your website. You are now making your website a destination for people to come to, to find information, right? And so this is really going to help your sales cycle immeasurably. For those of you who are retail e-commerce, really focusing in on the thought leadership piece is not going to be a good use of your time, um, only because you are dealing more with like one-off purchases, give or take, right? They're purchasing a product. They might, so we talked about the recording studio, right? They might just be purchasing one recording session, right? And then it might take them a while to come back. So like thought leadership for you guys is not a good use of your time exactly because you could be you could be spending your time doing other things um, and putting out content in different ways. So this is very specifically for our service providers. Um, Jessica asks, are there any SEO tools that I can use to generate more traffic? So generating traffic is very much due to awareness and advertising, right? So the SEO tools that are out there, they're going to help you determine where to focus on. That's what SEO tools are going to do. They're going to tell you what people are searching for. And remember, SEO is search engine optimization. It's not um, social media optimization. So it's not SMO, it's SEO. So these tools are very specifically around you know, Google ads, Bing ads, things like that. But they're going to tell you what terms people are searching for. They're going to tell you how many people per month um, in the U.S. are searching for these terms. They're going to also be able to tell you, like, you can do competitor research, right? So if you, you can go and see what keywords your, your competitors are bidding on um, and paying for, so that you can start bidding on and paying for them too. Um, but SEO is a complement to advertising. So if you want more traffic, you have to advertise. You have to advertise on social. You have to advertise um, on um on search engines, that's how you're going to drive traffic. Now, organic, that's paid SEO. Organic SEO is very helpful because what that's going to do is that is going to lower your costs per person that clicks. That is why you want to focus in on the content piece of it. Because if you just throw ads out there and you're in there just sort of going out there in the wilderness and you don't have a website, because remember, you have to send people somewhere. If you don't have a website that they can get to, if you don't have a website that's optimized, or if you're sending them to a page that doesn't exactly have what they're looking for, then it's going to end up costing you more money um, in order to actually, that, that CPC cost is going to rise up, right? And so you're spending more money and you're getting a lower return. So, you know, all of this helps to lower the cost of advertising, but driving traffic, driving traffic is, is very much advertising. Um, and so, you know, social media advertising is less expensive. Um, usually with Facebook, it's $5 a day right? Which is really great. That's the minimum. With LinkedIn, that's a little bit more expensive. It's more like $7.50 to $10 a day uh, for LinkedIn. Uh, Google ads, more expensive, right? Because you it's such a wide range. So you need to, you know, really think before you do Google ads, but sometimes that might be the, the right option for you. Um, but yeah, driving, driving traffic is advertising. So SEO tools that um, I like to use, I'm going to, I'm going to post them in here as I, as I say them, uh, type message. So one thing uh, that I use is called SEM Rush is a good one. Um, another one is Moz, um, just M-O-Z. Uh, is a good one to do research, not mom, mods, please. Um, and then the other one that I like to use is called Ahrefs. There. So those three, um, Jessica, are going to give you uh, the research and the tools that you need to determine <clears throat> um, what keywords you want to be um, putting on your website, what keywords are good for, for spending um, ad dollars on. And really, they're going to help you put together a campaign that's going to give you the best um, return on your your buck. Um, Daniel asks, how much are streaming ads? Are you talking about the ads that go on like YouTube? Um, Daniel, I just want to double check. Well, I, I recently uh, heard that you can get streaming ads read locally for like big events, like 
uh, a hockey game or uh, like an NHL game or something, but it's regional. So we pay, do you know, do you know what I mean? I do. Yeah. So those are what we call OTA or over the air ads. Those are very expensive. <laughs> uh, I'll be very honest with you. Those, so those ads, those ads are, those ads do tend to be very expensive um, just because you're, you're not reaching like thousands of people. You're reaching millions of people at a time. Um, however, all of the um, local networks, they all have, or they should, they used to, they used to have like all of their ad rates um, directly on their websites. You usually have to scroll down to the footer um, and there's usually like a link that says advertising. And so you can purchase, for example, um, like 30 second ads, 60 second ads, so forth and so on. But those are going to be anywhere from, you know, I, I think the least I've ever seen them be is like 1500 but they're more like $2,500, $5,000, $7,500 for, for, you know, like a 30 to, or 60 second ad, um, you know, for, for over the air. So it's definitely doable, but you know, it is going to be a big chunk of your marketing budget. Um, Jessica asked, do you recommend paid ads as a starter business or more so organic? Um, I recommend paid ads for awareness only at first as a starter business. And then once you have started to build up your, um, your list, once you have really gotten, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15,000 um, actual clicks on your campaign, then you can start kind of limiting, then you can start actually actually breaking that down and start doing things like lead ads or conversion ads. But when you first get started, you really want to focus on just driving traffic. Like that is it. Um, because driving traffic to your landing page, when they get on that landing page, asking people for their email address, you know, asking people to, to purchase, like just get them to your site is super duper important. And, and that is actually quite cost effective. Um, and it doesn't, you know, you're not spending as much, as much money. Like you can spend as little as, um, like $150 on Facebook to do that a month. Um, you know, and if you have more, that's great. You can get more 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 traffic but like you can do that for as little as 150 dollars a month um you know but once you start doing things like conversions that actually gets quite expensive because those tend to be in like the dollar to two dollar per conversion um and so you don't want to be spending that money just yet um because you really need the traffic to kind of back it up so i hope that that i hope that that's helpful um let me just jump down here um, okay, so just to kind of go back to content and we're, let's go back to like those content categories, right? And how to use those content categories. Um, you know, we talked about remember, it's awareness, your services, educational, your call to action. Those are the different content categories. So you're going to use them in your newsletter, right? So you can, you can, you know, put something in your newsletter call to action. I think we talked about doing your rewards program, right? In your newsletter, um, your social media feed. This is really helpful for creating social media content because social media content, you know, you want to be doing on a regular basis. And so knowing that you have four buckets to fill is going to help you actually create that content. Um, that's that's four days right there. Or you can break it out over the course of, you know, if you want to only want to post twice a week, you can break it out over the course of two weeks, right? But again, like you have, you can, you can do your content ahead of time. You don't have to write it in the moment for sure. Um, your blog posts, again, you want to use those categories to, to help you write your blog, your blog articles on your website. Um, one thing I do want to say when it comes to social media is, um, unfortunately, the algorithms that are now available and current on social media, even if you have 10,000 followers, they, you, only one, per, one to three percent of people are going to see what you post immediately. Um, I don't know if you've noticed as you've been online um, and on your own social platforms like Instagram, Facebook, not so much LinkedIn, um, and even somewhat of, of TikTok, even if you're if you're on TikTok, you'll notice that like you'll see stuff that was posted a couple of days ago or like a week ago, like show up on your feed. 
And you realize that people have been having conversations about this and you didn't even know it was happening, right? Even though you're following that page, even though you're following that person, like you didn't even see or you weren't even notified that, hey, like so-and-so had like a new a new post. Um, and that is by design on these platforms. They're doing it on purpose because what they want is for businesses to pay to get their content out, to get in front of new people. Um, and so it's a, uh, it's really unfortunate and it really sort of accelerated with COVID. It was, it was starting before COVID like 100%, but I would say probably in 2020, 2019, 2020 is when we really started to see a deprioritization of new content being, being shown to new people to drive organic growth. Um, and even with people that are following you already, um, you know, if you're on TikTok, you'll know this because <laughs> people are complaining about it. They're like, I like I'm being shadow banned, right? Like I can, like you're not seeing my stuff. Like, why is this not happening? This is being done on purpose. And so you do want to have quality content because the people that are for you are going to find your content, right? But you also make want to make sure that you have quality content because when it is time to start pushing it out and start promoting it, you want to make sure that you know what you have out there is, is of high quality um, as well. Um, any questions? I just want to make sure, um, you know, everyone has a chance to ask questions um, before we kind of get into to this piece of it. Um, oh, not yet. Okay, okay. So I'm just going to jump here. So curating content is actually really, really helpful to help you fill up your editorial calendar. Um, and all that means is that you are following other organizations and businesses within your like your niche, your what you do. And that is because it's not just enough to talk about what you do. It's not just enough to talk about, you know, um, you and your business, but it's also very helpful for people to see that you are paying attention to what is happening in the wider industry, right? And so by curating content, you're sharing that with your followers to say, hey, like, you know, I talk about X, Y, and Z. Here's another great article from someone else that's also talking about this that sort of backs up what you've been saying, or you can actually use that to, um, to respond to. So if someone has like a really bad hot take on a topic, like you can respond to that and go, you know, I actually don't agree with this and here's why. Right. So now you again, like you didn't have to write this whole article, but you can actually respond to it to show, hey, like I know what I'm talking about. You can see like, you know, based on all the things that I've said in the past everywhere you can find me that I, I don't believe this and here's why. But now you have an actual opportunity to actually um, drive conversations on your different platforms. And again, that's driving engagement, which is really, really um, key. Um, so I'm, I'm a really big fan of curated content. This is both for my, ret my retail folks, my e-commerce folks, and my um, consultative service provider folks. Like everyone can do curated content. And again, just kind of helps you to fill up your, um, your feed, your social media feed. Um, <clears throat> okay, social media, let's, let's get into it. So if you could put in the chat, um, what platforms you're on as a business and what platforms you're on personally. I'm very curious to see what, what pops up there. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes to do that. Okay, we got LinkedIn, that's the first one. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Wow, you're busy. Business for Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, you mentioned on your YouTube channel. Okay, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, IG, Facebook. Okay, okay. So it's good to see that lots of you are on TikTok. That's good. That's good. Great. But I like that there's lots of Pinterest. I see a few YouTubes. That's really great. Okay. All right. This is good. I like it. I like it. 
Well, on everybody share the man on TikTok. It's not just you. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> everybody is being deprioritized on TikTok. I don't know what's going on on TikTok. It's it's ridiculous. Okay. All right. This is good. This is good. Okay. All right. So let's let's really talk about social media and like it's it's th how it works, the reasoning behind it, what, what you do on social media, so forth and so on. So I'm going to sort of break it again. I'm going to break it out into my retail folks, um, e-commerce folks, and my my services consultants, etc. So one thing I will say is whether you use it or not. Facebook is the front porch of the internet still. <laughs> so even if you're not like on it as a business, right, regularly, um, you still have to have a business page on Facebook. Like people expect it. And if you don't have one, they think something's wrong with you, right? Even though, like, even if you're not even on it, right? Even if people, your your people on, on, aren't on um, on Facebook, right? You still have to have a Facebook business page. And it, especially if you want to use Instagram ads, like you still, you have to have a Facebook business page. So for some of you, it's going to be like, okay, like, yes, we will definitely have a, a Facebook page. Um, and you're actually very active on it. For others of you, you only have a Facebook page simply because you need it to access um, the ad, the ad campaign. Um, yes, Mick, Facebook business page for B2B. Yep. Like it doesn't matter. Everybody who's a bit, who owns a business just needs to have a Facebook business page. Just, just set it up. Right. Um, like I said, it's the front porch. It's what people expect. Um, I, I think in the next like three to five years, it's not going to be so much, but I'm still seeing that, you know, the priority is to like, why don't you have a Facebook page and it's your Facebook page. So we're still, we're still getting that from consumers. So hopefully in the next three to five years, it's not, it's going to change. But for right now, yes, you should have a, a Facebook business page, regardless of the type of business that you are. Um, so for those of you who are um, e-commerce retail, Facebook ads is the most cost-effective way right now. And when I say Facebook ads, please know that I'm including Instagram in that because it's all part of Meta. So um, Facebook and Instagram ads are the most cost-effective way to reach your target market. Why is that? Because you can target their interests directly, right? And you're targeting actual people. So unlike search engine ads, where you're actually targeting what people are searching, the terms that people are searching, in Facebook, you are targeting people directly. You're targeting them by location. You're targeting people by age, uh, by gender. Like there are so many different ways that you can target people on Facebook um, that if you are selling something, like a product of some kind, um, you know, you want to reach out directly to, you can get to people directly on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and so that is going to be like the most cost-effective way to do that. Like I would not recommend doing Google ads anytime soon. I would recommend you spend your, your time and money on Facebook ads. If you're going to, to drive traffic and build awareness for your, for your business, um, is, is going through Facebook and Instagram, like 110%. Um, also remember, you also get Facebook shopping, you get Instagram shopping, the, the quicker you can grow your following, you get Instagram shopping so people can actually, you know, do social shopping. So, you know, for, for my retail folks, like if you are selling products, if you are selling, if you're a business that's selling something like a, a thing, um, you know, you want to get you want to get that as, as quickly as possible, because that's just going to help you grow your revenue very, very, very quickly. Um, and yeah, so definitely retail B2B, Facebook and Instagram, those are going to be your two, your two platforms. Um, TikTok is also becoming, um, really great at selling. Um, one thing though, to remember with TikTok is that you, the person, right? The person that's on the screen that I'm looking at right now, they're interacting with you. So you know, TikTok is very, it's very authentic, right? Like you can't go on there and be like, you know, just talking about your, your product. Like you have to 
go on there as yourself, your authentic self and showcase yourself and showcase your products. But as we've seen, like stuff sells out because of TikTok, right? Like it, it really does. And so again, um, you know, advertising on TikTok is, is kind of expensive. I think it's going to come down, but it just hasn't yet because it's so new. Um, but certainly if you are, you know, selling a product of some kind, like TikTok is, is great because if you can get it, you know, into the, like onto the right feed, onto the right for you page, um, you know, and enough people interested in it, you can really drive your sales. I mean, you know, look at that pink sauce, look at the, unfortunately, look at the pickles, right? Like look at all the different products that you've seen go viral on TikTok and it happens really, really, really quickly. Um, so definitely TikTok is um, kind of the new sort of wave of the future for, for individual and selling to individuals. Um, so we really love, we love TikTok. Um, for my consultants, for my B2B folks, um, you guys, LinkedIn is going to be like, or should be like your main social media platform. Um, why? Because people who are looking for services, people who are looking for B2B um, services, they're on LinkedIn. Not only that, but LinkedIn has very specific, people have very specific reasons for going to LinkedIn. Like you don't go to LinkedIn to look at someone's cat pictures, right? Like you don't go on LinkedIn to look at somebody's like grandkids. That's not, that's not why you're going on LinkedIn, right? Like you're going on LinkedIn for business, right? Like that's why you're going on to LinkedIn. You're trying to figure out like what's going on in the industry. What are, you know, people who are the leaders in your industry doing? What are they talking about? What are they having discussions about? So LinkedIn is really where you want to spend time really establishing yourself. Remember, we talked about thought leadership. LinkedIn is really where you want to establish yourself and to start establishing your thought leadership and making those connections with other individuals who you could potentially sell to. So social selling on LinkedIn and sales prospecting on LinkedIn is a really good use of your time and effort because it's going to help you fill your sales pipeline. Um, it's going to help you figure out like what companies you want to be reaching out to. So, you know, spending time on LinkedIn is, is really helpful. Also, Facebook groups, um, for you folks is going to be super duper helpful, not necessarily because you need to participate because I think we all know what um, dumpster fire Facebook groups can be, but um, Facebook groups are really great for mining data um, and mining data about what to talk about and content that you want to write. Um, so people go on Facebook groups all the time and they ask questions, right? They say, how do I do this? Or um, I'm a brand new business, you know, and I need an accountant. Like, you know, what do you do? Like I see, I'm in a bunch of different industry groups. And I get people who ask, hey, like we're going to be looking to move to a new CRM, right? Like what have you used? And they don't, it's just an open question. Like I need a new CRM, like tell me what to use. Or, you know, again, asking questions about, well, how do I, how do I incorporate as a business? Or how do I, how do I do taxes? So like, people are asking these questions. And so for those of you who are, who are, you know, in that, on that thought leadership track, this is an opportunity for you to get topics to answer, right. in the content that you're writing. And so instead of having it come out of your brain going, I don't know what I'm going to write about. You have a whole list of topics. That's like, well, people were asking about this and they were asking about that and they were talking about this. And so now you can, again, cause we talked about you being a resource for people, Right. So you can actually, you know, go ahead and, and do that. Um, so I really I'm a, I'm a big fan of Facebook groups specifically just to mine data. Um, other other um, platforms, Pinterest, um, again, good for if you're on Instagram. Right. Like if you're super on Instagram, Pinterest is another good one because Pinterest is it's weighing a little bit, but people still go to Pinterest, right? Like they are still, they're still on Pinterest. And so Pinterest and Instagram have kind of like the same user base, if you will. And so the nice thing about Pinterest is again, it's like LinkedIn. People go to Pinterest for a reason, right? Like, yes, you can see cute cat pictures on Pinterest. Like, yes, you can, but that's not where they're going, right? They're going because they're doing a the search. They want to be inspired. So, you know, again, like 
if you're a very visual brand or you have um, the opportunity to be very visual. So like a lot of clothing shops are on Pinterest, right? Because they can showcase outfits, they can showcase, um, you know, different, um, different products. So Pinterest is really great if you are a very visual um, retail organization, um, you know, again, fashion, uh, beauty, like Pinterest is going gonna, is gonna to be right up your alley. Um, there are a lot of you on YouTube, and I would be very interested to hear those of you who are on YouTube for your business. Um, what what do you do on YouTube? Because I'm I'm just very I'm just very interested um, in in this. So if you want to raise your hand or you know just sort of um, answer, like what do you do on YouTube? What? I heard somebody. Okay, you do how to crochet videos. Oh, that's great. Or do you also do that on um, TikTok too? Jessica? Yes. Okay, great. She does. See? That's Sorry, great. I forgot that I had the unmute option. <laughs> but yeah, no so worries. I do how to videos as a segue into what I want to do next. So that's kind of how I do it. Got you. And what do you want to do next? I'm just curious. Um, I want to head, or I will be bringing out like, uh, at home kits. So mm -hmm. I want to familiarize people with the kind of things that they will potentially be able to learn with the at home kits. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. So yeah, so that is a fantastic way of selling yourself um, and being a resource, right? On social yeah. media, um, how to. So that's awesome. I'm super happy to hear that. Um, a uh, recording studio video. So are you showing people like what actually happens at the recording studio or are you actually showing like the kind of the end result, like a a, a demo reel or both? Um, well, everything. Some are interviews, some are people recording, some are after they recorded, they make a music video. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have a TV show on cable. So that was an hour show. So now we're breaking it down to, you know, smaller segments that people want nowadays because, you know, that yep. was cable. So yeah, yeah, just anything related to the studio, music, all that. Okay. I would also recommend if you're not doing it already, um, like since you're already sort of doing video, you have audio, right? Potentially like turning that also into a podcast because, right, that's something that people can listen to, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't necessarily have to pay attention like visually. So, yeah. you know, you might want to actually repurpose that and atomize that content that you already have <laughs> into a new distribution channel too. Right, because podcasts is, podcasts are growing. They are. Right? We have some people that do podcasts at our studio. We don't specifically have one. So how would we incorporate? Like it would basically just be the videos, but just the sound of the videos that are made. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if you watch like ESPN. That's the one I'm thinking of. So if you know Rich Eisen, right? Like he has a podcast, right? And and actually a lot of a lot of like large. Um, creators do this, right? They have a podcast. And so you can just download the audio, right? You can just download the audio. You don't need to download the video, but then they also offer like just them talking to each other, <laughs> like a video of just them talking to each other. But like, that's also really popular because people like to digest, they digest information differently, right? So for people, for example, like I like to listen to podcasts when I'm driving, right? Just because if I'm on a long drive, I don't always want to listen to music. So I'll listen to a podcast because I know, okay, it's an hour, right? So oh, if I got a six hour drive, I can listen to six podcasts, right. right? So like you can break it. So, so people do like to just listen to podcasts or they just kind of turn them on, like as they're in the house, maybe cleaning or whatever. So you're basically just giving people like another option to, um, to interact with you. But again, like you don't have to do anything differently. You just take that audio and like maybe do an intro or something and then you upload it. Right. So, and you can monetize it the same way that you do your YouTube videos, right? Like you can still get, especially if you're part of like a podcast network, like Libsyn, or if you put it on like Apple music or something like that, you know, you can say like, we're up to, to, you know, monetizing it and get ad and get ad revenue. Nice. So just like you do with YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, sure. And then, uh, Walani, you mentioned that you have a vlog and you do business slash lifestyle content. Can you go into a little bit of detail, like exactly what you do on, on YouTube? I didn't see her. Hi. 
So basically, um, I vlog my day, like I vlog mm -hmm. my vlog my week of what I'm doing with my business, what I'm doing with my personal life, mm -hmm. and uh, I do have like kind of sort of a big following on TikTok. So like most of my Good. TikTok most of my subscribers are from my TikTok. So it's just to get them to see more of me and more of my right. brand, get to know me personally, to get them to want to support more and not right. just off of a, I see it, I want it. So to get a right. connection with <laughs> me as well. Right. So one thing I will say is that when it comes to, to social media, you definitely want to, one, you want to get people off of TikTok because we all know what TikTok is doing, right? By shadow banning people. Um, but two, you want to try and get them off onto other platforms because of like, for whatever, for those of you who are not aware, um, TikTok has a very bad like banning issue where people will get mass reported for no reason just out of like spite. And so people will have have like have lost like their entire TikTok um accounts just like out of nowhere. And there's no way to really get them back unless you have a large enough following that you can mobilize people to to interact on your behalf. So definitely, you know, keep on TikTok because I think TikTok is fantastic, like peer-to-peer -peer, like video platform, but also do your best to try and get people off. Um, of TikTok and onto YouTube, onto like your own website as well. So that if God forbid, like the worst happens, um, you don't also lose your entire, um, your entire platform. Right. And, I, and I'm sure you have backups and backups and backups, but, you know, just make sure that, you know, you're, you're pulling it off of TikTok and onto your other platforms. Cause that's really, that's really key until they get that, get that part figured out. Um, Okay, is that any anybody else? Anybody else doing doing YouTube? And then I saw one person that said Snapchat, and I'm like, girl, hey, <laughs> I haven't done I haven't I haven't done Snapchat in so long. I feel like TikTok is the new Snapchat. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, but what do you, Shamika? What are you using um, Snapchat for? Like you said. Um the same thing for TikTok. So I kind of like interchange mm -hmm. the both of them. So I kind of mm -hmm. share whatever I post on one, I share it to the other one. Just so yep. I make sure like if people aren't on one or the other, they're still going to see my content. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Fantastic. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, let me just, I want to jump down. We have some like metrics. So I just want to. Um, Can I ask a question some... really quickly? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have used, I've uploaded um, videos to my YouTube, but I really haven't used it um, a whole lot, but I'm mm -hmm. considering uh, using it a little bit more because I want to do just what you suggested as far as the podcast, right, as well as mm -hmm. YouTube. Now, my mm -hmm. niche market are seniors, older adults, baby boomers, right? The video that mm -hmm. I had uploaded was when I did, when the pandemic happened, I did um, a class with seniors from the various senior centers called mm -hmm. Zoom, Zooming While Booming, While Baby Being a booby, Baby Boomer. You can still learn mm -hmm. how to Zoom and that way minimize or eliminate social isolation. So I had uploaded right. that to my YouTube channel, but I really haven't done a whole lot with it. But just mm -hmm. this morning, I was like, you know what? You need to utilize that YouTube channel and continue to post things. And then, um, like you said, you know, use the the information on a podcast as well. So that way you get the video as well as audio. And then yes. it can be monetized, right? And maybe even do some shorts yep. and that type of stuff. So exactly. What would you suggest? I mean, considering the niche market, what? kind of videos should I upload I don't know I'm a little baffled so, about that part yeah I think I think you're probably going to have to like do a little bit of research to see if there's anyone else like aiming at that market to see like what their videos are doing because remember you can always see like you know what their statistics are by just looking at their videos like how many views are they getting what kind of comments are they getting one thing to note is that actually podcasting um is actually has the highest growth among the boomer age oh yeah um, okay 
Yeah. Yep. So, po- so podcasting has been, been become very, very popular um, with people who are of the boomer age. I don't know if it's because it's, it's just easy, right? Yeah. They can just listen to it. It's like the radio. You know, right, exactly. like it's, 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 yeah. it's, they don't, they don't have to, they don't have to particularly, you know, um, you know, have a specific type of um, uh, tech, right. To do it. Like they can, they can use their phone, right. They can get it from their, if they have Alexa, like if their kids have set Alexa for them or whatever, they, you know, it's easy for them to actually you like listen to podcasts. Okay. And so, um, yeah, so the boomers are really growing um, with it's Gen X and boomers. That's like the highest, um, the highest demographics for podcasts. Another mm-hmm. place is Facebook. Like Facebook has an older demographic, right? Like, okay. like I think, I think we all know this. If you go on Facebook, yes, right? Yes, Who's yes. On Facebook, right? Yes. But, but Facebook also has an older demographic. It's something that they are comfortable with. Right. right. Because all these new platforms like, you know, TikTok and Pinterest and like those are those are fairly new, um, you know, and sometimes a little it's, it's a little bit like I don't understand how this works. But like, let me tell you something. They they understand they understand how to use Facebook. Right. They understand what a Facebook live is. They understand all of that. So one thing that you can do potentially is you can you can cross post over to your Facebook page so that they can access through Facebook watch. Right. Okay. Um, and, and Facebook will actually help you boost Facebook watch. Another thing that you can do is actually, um, if you want to, it's going to be more work, but if you're very um, targeted in on that, on that demographic, you can actually set up a Facebook group, right. That you can then curate specific content for that group. Um, okay. And they can get things like extra videos or like extra shorts and things like that. And so you're actually building a community um, on the platform. So you can still keep YouTube as like your main platform, because certainly right. if you have a website or if you want to actually showcase your videos on your website, you, you're going to need a YouTube link anyway to, be able okay. to share those videos. So like stay on YouTube, but I think you have some other venues and options for you to expand. That I can expand. Um, into okay. your um into other into other platforms but yeah podcasting and facebook are right where you want to be because that's where your demographic For my demographic okay mm-hmm. all right thanks yep. very exactly. much and then one sure. more and then thing. oh yeah go ahead, go ahead. Is, there's a facebook like facebook has an opportunity to do a paid group so if you wanted to 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 have yes. a community where let's say you can do whatever maybe i don't know once a month maybe do like some I'm a professional organizer, do like, you know, a decluttering session. Mm-hmm. Let's work on putting all your, your legal documents together. And I can do that in the group. Right. Mm-hmm. Would you advise um, a paid Facebook group considering I know Facebook can be kind of fickle, right? And they can, so. They can be kind of fickle. So what I have found people do is that they will do the paid portion on their own website, and then they do an invite to the Facebook group. So that, so it's a private group, so it, it can't be found through searching. Okay. So they set up a private group, but the payment and everything is done not through Facebook, but, but, but through your own website right. of some kind or through your own cart. And right. then they get access directly to the group that way. So you 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 get told, hey, like you have to use the same email address so I can, you know, make sure to invite you, or you have to tell me what your email address is, okay. you know, your Facebook profile, so I can invite you. That sounds good. Okay, awesome. Um, Thank you much. Payment through Facebook. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so we are scheduled to end at. Uh, 2.30 here. Um, the one thing I do want to say just to kind of like wrap all of this up is you want like, you don't need to do everything at once. It is not necessary for you to like be on five different social platforms. It's more important that you are consistent in what you can do, that you're honest about what you can do. So if you really only can create like one blog article a month, then that's what you can do. Just do it consistently. If you really only can do like one to two social media posts a week, that's fine. Do that consistently. Um, it's, it's more that you build the habit 
of creating content and of, of reaching out to your target market on a regular basis than it is to sort of follow, well, you have to do this and you have to do that. And if you're, you know, this type of business, then this is what you should be doing. No, like, you know what your bandwidth is, you know what you're capable of doing. And um, if it's just you who's doing the work, then you need to be able to fit it in to your current workflow. So please don't think that, you know, you absolutely have to, um, to do something. Um, to do all the things. Uh, Dan, Danielle asks, are there any free money collecting software that you use on your website? So um, I'm guessing you're talking about a payment processor. Is that correct? Just to confirm? Like to accept payments and things like that, Danielle? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, so there's, so no, there's, there's really no free uh, payment processors, but most payment processors charge the same amount. So like, I'm a big fan of Stripe because you get your money right away. Right. Um, whereas with PayPal, like people have run into like really big issues with PayPal, like keeping their money for months and months at a time. And that's just not cool. Um, whereas Stripe tends to not do that. And it's actually much easier to use. Um, but yeah, you're always going to have to pay a processing fee. You're always going to have to um, pay those transaction fees, but on your taxes, you do get to, to write those off on your taxes. If you're an LLC, like you can actually write those off on your taxes when you do your taxes. So um, it's not, it's not always going to be just a net deficit. And then do I fill a Facebook page for um, replaces the website? Absolutely not. Facebook is rented. That is not your platform. That is not your platform. You do not own that. And they can take it away at any time. Mm -hmm. So your website is your owned property. <laughs> and as long as you are paying for the domain and paying for the host and paying for everything, you own that and no one can take that away from you. So um, you should never, ever use social media um, as a replacement for your own website because that's, you're renting that, right? That's an apartment, <laughs> right? And so that can, they can kick you out. They can break your lease at any time. <laughs> um, so you always want to have a website no matter what, like for sure. Even if it's a small website, if it's a Wix website, a Shopify website, don't care. You just always want to have your own place, um, you know, that is, that is online that you, um, that you own and you completely control. Um, David, I see you're back. Um, any last questions, please, you know, feel free, um, David, please feel free to share my email address. Um, I am a resource to you all, um, you know, so if you do have any additional questions, um, if you think of something um, that comes up later, I am here for you um, as a resource. Yes, it is possible great. to hire us. Yeah, yes. very good. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, that's that's great, what we do. Great presentation. Um, so, so yes. Um, anything else, David? I, I don't know if you want to do wrap up. Can I ask one last question since I know it's coming up to the time that you have to get off? Yes, so as far as podcast, you say with the podcast on YouTube and then send that to Facebook Watch. What about um, mm -hmm. Clubhouse and Wisdom? Since those are audio apps, right? Can I also, like I do a room on Clubhouse and can I also use that content to kind of- You, you can, can absolutely. Uh, there isn't enough. I don't have enough data to, because Clubhouse is like so, so new. And then it like it was like up and then it crashed like right. really quickly. So the data that I currently have that has come out that was in 2022 was not very helpful. I'm actually waiting for um, a, several social reports to come out around for, in 2023 to see if the data like what the data is around Clubhouse, because like I don't know what the demographic is um, with Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. um just yet like that's that's kind of still up in the air so I would hold off on doing clubhouse like doing more just yet right. until we can get some more data around it um okay. just because it was so up and down in 2022 great question okay thank you much uh best and cheapest platform we can recommend to our clients for building a website so I'm a big fan of WordPress WordPress oh Rose. 
She froze again, David? Yeah, she froze again. I'm trying to get back, uh -oh. to get back on. Okay. Um, I'll add real quick. I'm Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Batiker, the Marketing Communications Officer. Um, I'll add that we will be sending out this recording to everyone who registered. Um, we're, we'll check with Courtney to make sure we can send out the presentation. Um, but I will also, uh, with her permission, um, provide her contact information as well. So just keep an eye out for the follow-up email. Yes, and I will send you um, a link. I will send you this uh, PDF as a presentation because there's a lot more in there but like you know I wasn't going to read it you know slide by slide but there's a lot of information in there for you guys um as well as like data um in there um so so yes and then can you also um Melissa or David can you send me the um the chat transcript because I know I missed a bunch when I was like trying to get in and out and I can't see what um, what comes <laughs> once I'm out. So if you don't mind saying that, I'd be more than happy to answer those questions individually. Gotcha. Thank That's you. So um, to close it out, I'd like to say thank you. Great presentation. A lot of good information. Um, hope everyone found value in the presentation and can, and can put some of the uh, tips and utilize those. Um, thank you, Melissa, for your support and putting this together. Um, did anyone have anything else to close out? Did you want to say anything, Ms. Watching? Melissa, could you answer my question? Did you see that my question about price of advertising? I didn't see that. Oh, I'm Courtney. Yeah, yeah I'm I with Baltimore Community Lending. Apologies. I didn't see that. Sorry, Daniel. Oh, yeah, it, says, it, probably, it probably came through once I... Um, oh, it says to Don... Yeah, I was just asking. I'm in Vancouver, Canada. The prices quoted, like you said, for Facebook, would prices be about the same here or mm -hmm. not? Where could I get that information? No, the prices for Facebook advertising is the same. It's it's five it's five dollars both in Canadian and um, U.S. Um, overseas, I think it's a little bit different, um, but I know for sure that like I I do I have some Canadian clients and like we they have the same kind of like pretty low um, limit for for Facebook advertising so you're not going to to see that much of a difference other than like the um the exchange rate right so so yeah but it's going to be about the same thank you oh my goodness Ezra Lord that's a lot so all righty so um so Melissa's going to send me the chat transcript just so I can see any questions that I missed um and then I'll be more than happy to answer those questions um I'll get those over over to you guys um in the next couple of days all okay. right thank you great presentation thank you and um look forward to seeing you guys uh next quarter all right <laughs> all right thank you again Thank you very Everybody. much. Thanks for holding this space and thanks much for all the value that you added. Absolutely. This was an excellent presentation. It was. Good. All these nice. amazing tips and tools. Thank you guys yes. so much for putting this together. God bless you all. Bye-bye. God bless you all. Have, have an amazing evening. Great job. David, before you hop off, do you know how to save the chat? No. no. Okay. So in the bottom right hand corner underneath mm -hmm. the chat uh you, where it says type your message here mm -hmm. there are three dots yep got it you see save chat boom good can you and when you do that can you send that to me so that i can pass where that to my, is it gonna go to my hard drive uh i think so or or if it doesn't it, i think it might actually go to your zoom account under recordings okay you have to log in your zoom account and go to recordings and it should be there all right, give me a sec. I got a um, 2.30. I'm ready to take care of it. I'll send it. Okay. Soon. Okay. All right. Thank you.